So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, it's the 1st of February 2012. It's Digital Learning Day and we're learning here together um, about detox, um, something that I've been trying in my classroom and we have um, Shamar with us. He's a student in my Hi. classroom. Hi Shamar. Hey. Okay. And this is a, a practice that Monica Hardy has been doing. Well, Monica, you'll have to describe for a couple of years. Is that correct? Yeah, we have been. Okay. And it's been um, looked at by um, James Folkstad uh, from Colorado State University. Did I get that correct, James? Welcome. That's, that's correct. Okay. And so we thought we'd take a look at this. Um, I've been doing it now for a couple of weeks. Who knows what I'm doing with it? Uh, we're we're going to figure it out together. And um, Scott Shellhart is with us. Welcome, Scott. Hello, Paul. And Oh, I like the flag in the background. Very nice. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Where is I've that? I've used it on a couple other. Uh, it's from Minicam. It's a camera. Uh, sourcing and gadget thing lets me switch between cameras. But. I see. Got it. Swimming around in an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the voice of Kelsey. Kelsey, welcome. I think welcome. you should try. Hello. So, so Monica, um, why don't we, we have, we, a couple of other people might be joining us. Um, you know, Google Plus has gone down and invited 13 year olds to join so we can start having uh, students and <laughs> Kelsey, how do you feel about that? I'm legal now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. So, um, and, uh, and anybody else to introduce not yet i think we did all introductions good so the, I, monica i just see this as kind of a dialogue kind of a sharing um of you know different things that we're going to be doing together um and um we'll see where it goes do you want to kind of begin i know you've described it in a lot of detail on um lab connections dot blogspot dot com but um kind of say it again um what detox is all about and how you got um, connected to james perhaps okay um or whatever you want <laughs> right uh in figuring out a way to redefine school and really listening to kids um one of the things that we talked about quite a bit was um, how we couldn't wait till three o'clock or the weekend and how people were stressed and would there be a way to have a more humane life and um, one of the things that we thought about is um, how much of the standard curriculum is really useful and um, I guess the biggest question was how do you get how, how could we get towards a quality of life so the focus started um, going on a process of learning to learn. You know, what if we what if we just looked at a process of learning to learn? So we called in some expert um, self-directed learners and tried to get some ideas of how they went through the learning process. We took those words and kind of had kids make them user-friendly for themselves. Um, and then Jim and I um, working on this, we met at a was it Dave Warlick, Jim? Is it Dave yep. Warlick? Yeah. We, we just met there, and um, I don't even remember. I think all of the detox came after our meeting, um, the whole idea of it. Um, so we started kicking around this whole idea of you know, what matters most, you know, and uh, as parents, as teachers, as human beings, what do we want, you know, most in life? And it was really focusing on this um, process of learning to learn. Um, what it's what it's boiled down to, at least in my perception right now, is um, it's a self-reflection that I think is great.
greatly missing. If we if we could learn to self-assess on a daily basis, um, I think that would improve things quite a bit. And in talking to the kids just this last week on, we did last year, we did detox kind of via um, some video, but mostly a Google Doc that wasn't as successful. This year um, we've been using video documentation, and I'm going to want Jim to talk about that um, a little bit. But what we've, what we've realized is, in, in this little book that we wrote, um, we said that detox is temporary. Um, it's like a jolt, an adrenaline jolt to your soul to get back to what matters most. Um, but the act, of, the act of it is not temporary. It's the natural thing that we missed out on. So it's like an exaggeration and a play acting of what goes on in a healthy, self-directed mind just to get you back to that natural state. And the words are, actually the words are notice, dream, connect, do. And one of the first times Jim and I got together to really hash it out, um, in Jim's brilliance, we, we looked at each other for quite a while and he finally said there's something missing. And um, he said the B is what's missing, to rid your mind of all the chatter of, of who you actually are. Um, so anyway, that's as far as I'm going to take it right now. I'm um, going to let Jim jump in or anybody else that yeah. wants to. I, I want to. Can I can I ask if I can restate what I heard you say there, the play acting. Um, so these are the kinds of thinking that self-directed natural learners do. Is that what you mean by One the... Of the things, and again, now this is just my perception mm -hmm. and I've been wrong many times. So my perception right now is that um, Learning is natural, and um, so what we tried to do is find people who learn naturally. So yeah, we, I'm believing that this this is a process. There's it's not new. Um, the words aren't special. Lots of people do this using other words or in different ways. Uh, lots of self-directed learners do it without even knowing about it. You know, they don't think through it. So getting this from self-directed learners that seem to be really healthy and doing well. So yeah, now it is like a jump starter, play acting. It's not natural to look in a computer and talk and say, what did I notice, you know? But we kind of feel like we need that jump start back. And that's why we're calling it detox. It's a detoxification from the publicly prescribed curriculum that has caused many of us to become mindless about what we do because we're so stuck in the routine. Mm -hmm. Jim, welcome. I, I want to check in with Shamar, though, because I can't see him. Are, Shamar, are you following what we're talking about? Yeah. So what are you following so far? Um, yeah, just basically talking about um, how you started up the detox thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Basically stuff like that. Right. And Shamar, after they like to make you talk here, even if you don't want to. <laughs> Shamar, after I watched your video of your first detox and then some of the kids that have been doing it for a couple of years um, uh -huh. one thing that they might suggest to you is um, they see it as a, like a stripping down peeling away everything that's not fake I mean that is fake in you or you know you might not even notice until you get to the real you um, uh -huh. so yeah maybe Paul because the comment that, hey man, I could tell Paul was just feeding you those lines, you know, but that is the play acting of getting us back to, because we're so used to answering the way we think other people want us to answer, and is it really us talking, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I can, like, I guess, I guess, like, um, you know, it's more like you saying that, um, we should, like, I guess, like, we just saying that um, when we do the detox, we should, like, try to be ourselves and, like, try to, like, not make it, like, try not to sugarcoat it, but still keep it, you know, at the level where younger kids can watch it and not um, be exposed to profanity and all that stuff. Well, that's always nice for older people like me, but <laughs> one of the things the kids said, too, is, in a natural state, that that's your mind talking. So there really is yeah. no audience. You know, mm -hmm. we're looking at it because we're researching it. But 
Jim and I even talked about in this detox booth that we have, should we have another person there? And I noticed when you guys do it, um, there's other people around. So that's even less natural, you know, if your mind is thinking and there's other people around there. Hello. Hi. Hello. This is Evelyn. Hi. Welcome. Evelyn. Hi, Mr. Allison. How are you? Yes, I saw it. You did a detox video too, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Thank you for giving, being such a sport and trying it out. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, it helps uh, um, helps let out feelings that I hold in and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you ever done a hangout before, Evelyn? Not on Google. Okay. Um, plus. Right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> yes, no problem. <laughs> We were just talking about um, the real purpose, our intention, <coughs> at least my perception of it is that um, detox is a self-reflection. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just you looking at yourself every day and saying, am I good with what I'm doing or do I need to change what I'm doing or, you know, just that pause that I think we miss because we're so busy all the time, or we're trying to please people, or we're trying to get that grade, or we're trying to get in, and it's, it truly is a self-assessment, checking up on yourself. Um, you kind of feel like you're the, you're the best person to do that. Yeah, it really helps out to express your feelings and everything. Yeah, it's really helpful. So Jim, do you want to jump in here and say whatever you want? But if you if you don't know what to talk about, the video documentation. Well, great if you talk to <clears throat> yeah, I just I I can just add that you know my my interests originated um, from the looking at how digital media. And has changed, has changed learning, I guess, and and then how the connectivity has allowed for um, learning in, in in lots of different spaces, and the the spaces that in, intrigue me and interest me uh, are spaces like the Drupal community, where they have what they call a duocracy, which is people. Um, gaining recognition and status within that community by doing things, learning and doing things within the community. So those communities really interest and intrigued me from the beginning. And then when I started talking to, to Monica about the Node and Stream Connect do, it, it just it seemed to resonate and fit. So um, you know, we started talking about how we we could assess growth learning growth over uh, a period of time for students who may be in in a in a space and um, we started thinking about logging um, and vi we eventually came into this video logging process where the uh, students very deliberately talked about things that they noticed things that they dreamed and things that they can where they connected and then what they did so my thought about the process, and then Monica can talk about it more. That my thought about the process is that uh, you would, you would, uh, this would be a longitudinal effort where you would, you would um, look at a student's dreams, at noticings, dreamings, connections, and doings at the beginning of their their experience, whether it's. Uh, the innovation lab or the, the BU house like what Monica is doing or some other experience and then you look at their their notice dreamings connecting connections and doings after uh, a two-year period or something of being in in that sort of space of detox and you know hopefully what we would see is uh, a real significant sh uh, change or shift in in their thoughts about what they what they want to do what they dream about what they notice, what they connect with, and what they end up ultimately doing. So it, it, it's, it's this digital video documentation of growth in an individual over time that would be documented. 
So that's what we're attempting to do is to figure out how to piece that together and what it would look like. Did that help, Monica? Yeah, that's great. So it ends up looking, that part of it looks like a kind of a speed reading of a video. You know, so you could start, like at the beginning, go, you know, you're, it's a minute video. It's over the course of maybe two or three years. And the beginning of the video is I notice a fly on the wall. <laughs> You know, because you don't know what to notice. And then at the end, you're talking about some molecular biology or whatever your interests ha happen to be. And so um, we're just thinking that, you know, that might be a more humane way um, to monitor growth. Plus the fact, again, that I'm really feeling like um, a self-assessment, a self-reflection like that is, is vital. If you want to, if you want to be a lifelong learner and not have have incentives to do that. Um, I think this is this is a vital piece to that that you're self self reflecting on a daily basis, and it doesn't have to be in a laptop. That's one of the things that we've cited. Yeah. yeah so we're we're in the process of sort of analyzing the the detox videos, I guess, if you want to call them that of the students that are in the in the innovation lab right now and they're all you know like you would expect they're all the all each student is in a different uh, place and not not to place judgment on that but at all some students are very much in the early portions of the detox where they are they're they're still dreaming um, and or noticing or or having even a hard time dreaming uh, and knowing what they want to connect with and what they want to do and, and uh, you know Monica and I have thought about that over many many or talked about it over many many discussions and, and think that that's absolutely necessary and essential that they have a time to be and then um, and then figure out what really intrigues them so uh, they can move and, and connect in that direction so Jim's really the expert in this field, in a lot of fields, but in this in particular, and uh, trying to code, code the, the videos so that we can splice them together, you know, in a few reading sort. Um, if, if anybody's seen the Deb Roy Birth of a Word, that kind of a, that kind of a feel. So we've been talking to college admissions about, you know, what if we know that homeschoolers and unschoolers have this alternate means, it's an e-portfolio, so that you can do more self-directed learning, but we also know that takes them forever to look at. So we've, ta we've played with that a little bit as well. And I haven't told Jim about this, we've just talked about this this week, and he's probably already maybe thought about it, but talking about kids making their own apps for phones, um, C-Click Fix is something that Ben, ah, dang, sorry Ben, I can't remember your last name, Horovitz or... Ah. Um, he started see click fix where you you have on your cell phone um, you see a pothole you see something in your city that everybody's eyes can't see but you see it you just click your cell phone and then they know about it and they fix it so we're also thinking about what if what if we could have a detox app and what if I could I could say right now I'm, I text that I'm noticing something or I text that I'm connecting something and within that day, I get five text numbers back to me that are, they were, they were noticing the same thing or they were connecting the same thing. So in a sense, we're creating serendipity or Jim's thing. We're, we're creating these communities of practice now within our own town using the technology to do that through these things that we think are pretty important to a self-directed learner. Can I, I want to check. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I barely could see the video, that's why. That's um, good. Listen, that's uh, I, I wanted to check in and ask um, my, my two students who are here um, about the word detox and what they think about that word and, um, and how it relates to their experience so far. Or anything else you've been thinking as you've been listening to? Go ahead. Um, well, move by with the word um detox. Um, I think of like detoxination, like when you let out everything. 
So that's how I see it as a place where you can let out all your feelings and the emotions that you have and everything that you keep inside, but like not keep it too personal, just like about how you feel on an everyday basic. Stuff. That's how I feel like detox means. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, it. Shamar, go yeah, ahead. me. Um, when I hear the when I think of the word detox, like I kind of think of dissect, like how someone would like dissect the food or something, and they'll like look inside, see what makes it tick. Like I guess um, when you do a detox, you're basically um, opening yourself up and like letting the viewers know how you like. What makes you tick? What um, angers you? What like makes you happy and stuff? Just like, um, just like showing yourself in a normal light to um, the other people that may be across the um, country, and like, just you know, being you for everyone to see. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Mm. Kelsey, we can hear you. Go ahead. I have a question. Good, Scott, please go ahead. Um, right. It sounds interesting, and Monica, you described it as you know, peeling off the layers that, you know, throwing away the things that are fake and getting down to the, the core, what's real. That can be a scary place. I mean, has anybody had trouble with this when they peel away the facades and they see what's really there? It's like, oh, I didn't expect that. It's very emotional. It can be very emotional, um, but very healing as well. I mean, detox as far as getting rid of the toxins. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, mm. it. Can be I, I agree on that. Like today when I did my detox, I was really emotional about it and I felt some type of way. Like it was kind of like healing myself through my past. So it felt really good to let it all out. Like, yeah. Okay. And now, Evelyn, do you ever go back and look at these videos after you do them, or you're just getting started with the process? Um, I look back and I look at them, and it makes me happy because um, I let out my feelings, and I could just express, um, see how I express myself, and it makes me really happy when I let them out and stuff, and I go back and see it, and I see that I'm not actually afraid of it, like, to let them out and show, like, the people that see it that... I could, um, I'm not afraid. So, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, and then my, my last question is, is, you know, the people that you've, that are doing this, Evelyn, you look like you're doing good with this, and Monica, your, your bunch is doing great things with this, but where's the age cutoff? I mean, can, does this work for everybody, or what does it look like for an 8-year-old versus an 18-year-old? Um, well, I think that... Um, a a year old would is just beginning to experience life and stuff. So, really, like I don't think an eight year eight year old would um actually have the experience that an eight year old has. So, I I don't know. That's my opinion. Yeah, I kind of agree with Evelyn there. Um, cause well, yeah, eight year old like from personal experience, like I see my nephew when he's like skyping with my sister. And, like, he gets distracted and, like, he just go off and do other things. And, like, um, and you can try to sit them down there, but they're um, never really going to grasp the full concept of doing a detox and letting out your emotions and stuff. So they're just going to be there and think that they're on, like, TV or something, and they're just going to do silly things compared to an 18-year-old where um, they're there to do a task and they, like, are going to follow through with that task. Um... Yeah, basically, it's just, like, the age difference and the maturity level will probably um, be, well, will most likely be um, severely different. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We've, we've tink- Go ahead. We've tinkered with all ages. Um, it really is designed, I think, for any age. Um, I think the older that you get, the more that you've been in the system the more you need it. Um, A five-year-old has that curiosity. Actually, um, my sister's five-year-old has has done some of the detox. And one of the things that I think, if if anybody just wants to start in, um, the noticing is huge. If you would just um, Mm -hmm. 
That's what my sister did with her daughter. She just had her, you know, why don't you, why don't you look for something unlikely today, something that you wouldn't expect to see today, and just see what you notice. And I, I think just pieces of the detox could really change education, could change a community um, if we notice the unlikely. Um, so the design really is, I, I don't know, what do you think, Jim? I think it's, I think any age. Um, what we are finding, though, is there's a lot of kids that, you know, maybe come from an unschooling family um, that don't need it quite as much. They don't understand it because they, they'll come to the BU house and they, they don't see it as the same as other people who need a space of permission because they're used to that already. Okay, so I just, it depends on where you're at and what level of detox you need. It's, you know, it, it's different for every person, I suppose. Yeah, I see it as a detoxification from the publicly prescribed curriculum, from people telling you what to do, getting you to the place where you know what to do when you don't know what to do. And Monica, I would add to that that it's not only school that does that. You know, commercials do that, um, parents do that. <laughs> you know, uh, lots of places in our lives do that too. So when I talk about detox with, with my students, I talk about it not only being detox from school, it's also detox from other places where people are in your head and telling you things to do and you want to get back to what you're thinking. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's a self-reflection, so, mm -hmm. you know, of life. That's one thing that, you know, Jim and I, him more than me, keep trying to bring us back to what's this all about, you know. Mm -hmm. One time that um, Jim was talking about this um, just recently, and he, we always keep going, well, as a parent, you know, what I really want for my kids. And at that point he said, well, not even as a parent, you know. It, this is just about being human and, you know, what it, what's it like to be fully alive? So. Kelsey, do you have any thoughts? I think what I've heard so far is interesting and I'd like to know more about it because I don't really know too much. To me, it's been one person says something and the others repeat it, but paraphrasing it. Nothing really new has been added, at least mm -hmm. since I came back. Got it. Mm. So Kelsey, would it help if you saw a detox video so you knew what it looked like? Probably. All right, we'll see if we can do that. It's what not really. we do to kids here like at the BU house is we, we don't give them, we'd rather they didn't know. I mean, it, it's like if you define how they're going to do detox, then they're not, it's not really a self-reflection. So mm -hmm. um, just try, Kelsey, give it a shot. Just, you know, you can do it without looking at a laptop. You can do it without the words. Um, they're just to help you. But try talking to yourself every day. Saying, hey, how's it going? You know, I already do. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Jim, what are you thinking about? Not much right now. I have had a long day. Okay. And I, I'm okay. kind of thinking I need, to, I need to sign off pretty soon. But I was actually thinking that it's, it's really cool to hang out with you guys, and it's, it's nice to be here. So I'm, I'm glad that I, I got to come and uh, meet, meet all of you. I appreciate you coming, Jim. Yeah. So we'll so. talk about you more when you leave. <laughs> oh, good. I'll uh, catch up on, on uh, oh, the re That's recording right. later. Jim, <laughs> Jim, do you have yeah. just a, a couple more minutes? I, the, sure. One, one sure. of the issues... You know, um, in, in doing something in a different context, like um, in my context and not Monica's context, um, the, my classroom is way public, right? And, and it's, um, it's made most sense to just kind of sit around in, in the room and kind of figure out, let, let people just talk wherever they are kind of thing and not necessarily go off to a different space. But that's created a, um, a sense of performance that they 
most students have um, broken through pretty fast on. I mean, I, I'm, co I'm couching my question in answers, I know. But, but I'm just, and I wondered if the students could talk about that too a little bit, like how it's different because it is public, um, how it's different because it's up online right away, that kind of thing, and whether that matters or, Jim, you had to go, so I wanted to yeah, I give you a chance to think yeah. about that with us, and then the students. Uh, might yeah, say. I don't. I think that um, yeah, you, if you have an audience, you may perform, <laughs> and that may not be what you, what you want. I'm not sure, um, or what they what they want. Uh, one of the things about the the some of the videos, the detox videos that that we've been recording, we mm -hmm. you know we try to make those particular recordings fairly private. And um, although they know that a researcher may be looking at them and helping them code and figure out, you know, sort of a progression over time, that uh, those, some of those videos are not necessarily made public. And I don't know, I don't know how that changes things. I'm, I, I would assume it changes them significantly. But um, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer. Mm. Some of them go up on YouTube. How is it decided what goes on YouTube and what doesn't? Monica? It's just up to the kids. Um, they have this last week, knowing that this was coming up, we've talked a lot more about it. And um, most of them have, it's, it's now become more of a, a, a chore thing to do. They, they see themselves doing it in more private ways back into their head now. They're, they feel like they're doing it more naturally back in their head because of the jump start that they had um, with the detox. Um, and they, Peter was even talking today about how, like when he's with Christians sometimes, he feels like they can detox each other. And that's the first time I've heard people talk really about that. Uh, although they do say sometimes go to the house to get detox. So... <laughs> Um, I do think it's a very private thing. I think for it to be healthy, it needs to be you, you know, it needs mm -hmm. to be you talking to yourself. Not that you wouldn't extend that to other people for expertise, but I think that, that you need to have a, a part of you that has solitude in it where you're talking to yourself. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's fake and it's open in like in your classroom and when we do it, it, it can go on YouTube and I think that does compromise the essence of what we're trying to get after. But again, it's we're play acting something so we can get back to it. So we kind of do have to do the fake so we can all see it to know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think if you were to make it public, you would kind of perform because the whole point is getting kind of into your own head and away from everybody else. But really, you're just recording it to share with everybody else, which is kind of what you're trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. Ev Evelyn or, or Shamar, do you have a, a thought about that? And Jim, whenever you have to go, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I see I have a... I see a new idea now. What I'm seeing is that detox helps... Um, Helps lose um no how you say it? helps people lose their fear of being shy, hmm. and I feel like um it helps um like it helps you be more social, and actually have like not be shy anymore to speak to anybody. So that's that's how I see it now, hmm. cause um by how all the detox I've been doing like now I'm not afraid to speak up anymore or to actually have a conversation with someone, and I don't know it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, personally, I think that, um, when someone's doing a detox, um, like, it's a little, it's going to be a little hard for someone to, um, try to be real while doing a detox still, um, mainly because of the fact that they're doing it to themselves and, um, like, like, they know that they're going to be posting it on site, so they're going to feel the pressure of trying to, um, speak or act at a certain level, and um, that's just gonna be them 
still like still masking themselves and trying to be someone that anybody else would approve of. I don't know though. Maybe maybe um I could be wrong, but personally I think that um, the people I'm around with while they're doing the detox, they try to um make themselves sound a little more sophisticated or um make them sound smarter just for the sake of um the people around them or the sake of people online to see. So yeah. You know, I gotta That's say. That's kind of what I was thinking. You know, I, I, I just want to at least propose that that's the natural assumption, but I've found that students get beyond that too. You know, one of the one of the um, first things that students were doing was they were saying, you know, I'm doing this because it's an assignment, and if that's all you heard. You know, you would think, oh, you know, why are they doing that? But then if you, it, it was almost what they needed to say to give themselves permission to then go on and do it. Um, and when you're sitting in front of the computer, you forget that there are, you know, in front of the screen, you forget that there there's an audience necessarily and you just kind of let it go. I think I've seen that happen quite a bit. So, and and students are more used to, you know, finding that solitude in themselves as they're talking, that they're not necessarily connecting with other people, they're connecting with themselves. But I don't know, I, I think it's I think it's possible to find to to be real with other people around you too. But mm -hmm. just and I, I'm yeah, not I sure. Know that. Yeah, I guess that's kind of why I said um, that I could be wrong because there's some that will be able to um, open up. Um, like me personally, I find it a little hard for me to open up because I'm not one who likes to um, um, outwardly express my feelings. But, um, you know, like there's others that can do that and um, actually mean what they say and be real to um, the audience. Um, I try, but honestly... Sometimes I honestly sometimes I fake it just you know so I can get it, get it done because it's an assignment. But um, yeah, you know sometimes I'm just speaking truthfully. How well, it's interesting that you not interesting because I say it, but the the word permission you brought up permission and again when we were talking this week, did Simon Sinek helped us get to the basic of what we were, this four-year plan that we have. And it's all about setting people free. Um, and by, in order to set them free, what we found is we need to create spaces of permission. And mm -hmm. so we see that detox provides, well, if we provide this space of permission, detox provides a prompt for what to do in that space if you don't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, it should, you should be able to do it anywhere it's going to be and there's no there's no right or wrong answer it's the self-reflection you know mm -hmm. um the quote that we we talk about all the time oscar wilde is uh, most people are other people um their thoughts are other people's opinions um, their lives some mimicry and um their passion is a quote and so we're, we're trying to get away from that that's the main thing you know mm -hmm. I, hi fred Sorry. I do you want to add to that? Hi, Paul. Hey, Fred. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Go ahead, Monica. I think another really key piece, and this this app that we were talking about today, um, is it like when you say, "Why would somebody like you said, Kelsey? Why would somebody want to do something personal on YouTube?" Well, it's because this whole thing that we're doing, this quiet revolution, we feel a huge responsibility. Because we know other people want some of the spaces of permission that we've been allowed as well. And so the, the you could call them buckets or whatever, the be, notice, dream, connect, do. We see those as opportunities to create serendipity and opportunities for um, conduits in the community of practice. Ways to get together with people that are noticing the same thing as you, dreaming the same things as you, you know, connecting to the same things as you. So that you can, you know, together now, you, you be you, but now be us, and together 
you can actually make those dreams become a reality and you can connect with other people. So twofold, you know, that there is a responsibility there, but it also, giving it publicly allows for that to happen. Um, Evelyn, do you want to introduce us to your dog? <laughs> oh, her name, this is my doggy. <laughs> she doesn't leave me alone. She's always with me. So, yes. <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> her, what, name what's her, na her name is Biba. Bebo. Biba. Biba with an A. She's a girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Evelyn. She wear pink. Yes, she does. Uh -huh. Evelyn, um, one of the things that you've said to me is that you want to do detox from home. What is yeah. that? Just what, what? What's your thinking behind that? Um, I think um, doing a detox from home would be a good idea because um, you feel comfortable and you could be yourself like doing it there instead of having the audience around you. I don't know. That's how I feel a person would feel more comfortable doing it. Yeah. Kids in the lab have moved. They moved towards doing it at home on their own laptop. And yeah. now they've moved towards, you know, I'm not even doing it on the laptop. It's, it's just part of when I run in the morning, I'm doing detox in my head. You know, they, they're not yeah. feeling yeah. the need to leave a physical remnant or documentation. Um, yeah, um, I think um, that by doing a home, like it's more like a, you wanting to do it instead of an assignment. Mm -hmm. um, like you wanted to do it because you want to, like not being like told to, but it's because you want to do it and stuff. So that's how, well, that's how I feel about it. Like mm -hmm. I want to do it. So that's why I was telling you if I could do it at home because I just, it was falling part of me that wanted to do it. That's great. Yeah. I'm going to throw a so, link in that's, um, go ahead. I was just going to ask when you're, uh, is it, the way you just described as you're running, it sounded like this was a, a, a silent voice inside your head, but I understood the part of the process to be voicing out loud what you're processing. Am I misunderstanding something, or? Well, there's it's twofold. Um, the purpose of it is to get us back to a natural state that is inside our head, because we believe it's a self-reflection that's vital to true intellectual learning and to quality of life. But in order to get us jump started back to that stage, what we did was we looked at people who did it naturally still or now, mm -hmm. and try to model that. It's like it's kind of like. Well, we've got to think aloud to figure out how to think aloud again because many of us are have become mindless and don't know how to think aloud. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so. Well, I, I, I ask because it, it's something that I've had to confront just in the last, uh, well, it's what, 13 years of being in a relationship with my wife who often speaks aloud to herself. I, my father is an orthodox Freudian psychoanalyst, and our home was extremely silent. There was very little uh, talk. What talk there was was quite serious, and talking aloud to oneself was really out there. And I had a really hard time dealing with this habit. I still do. It still kind of brings me up short when I encounter and realize and now of course we have a dog so <laughs> she's often speaking to the dog and i misunderstand and and uh, you know so i'm trying to practice extemporizing a little more than, <laughs> than i grew up doing but it's still very frightening work for me have you guys heard of susan kane's new book that just came out um quiet the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking <laughs> no, that's a lovely. I'm reading title. that now. It's it's pretty it's pretty excellent. What's There's the name the, again? It's called Quiet, and then uh -huh. in the title it also has the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. Uh -huh. 
and how's that making you what's that making you think about detox or um, well it was interesting when evelyn said um that it's helping her not be so shy mm -hmm. which it's it has helped a lot of it's helped me you know you look at yourself talking you're like dang that's what i look like that's not what i want to look like so it is a self-assessment that's not who i want to be you know so that's really good but the book is talking about we make it seem like if you if you aren't an outgoing gregarious sort of a person that that's bad and school is very much centered around you're rewarded for being like an extrovert and and not that there's an either or it's like an and because we're all different all the time but we need to honor when people get their juice from being in solitude and thinking we should honor that when people get their juice from being around other people we should honor that and so the detox helps you feel the the power of what makes me tick that's that's good i mean there's no one else assessing you but yourself and do i feel do i feel like this mattered and, and that i'm awesome what i'm doing is awesome and it's helping other people that's your assessment right but one of the things that that I love is, you know, people assume, and I think students often assume, that video is about performance. And I love flipping it and suggesting that maybe it's a way to have solitude, that that the, the main audience is going to be you looking at this video later. And if other people want to kind of eavesdrop on that, they can do that. But, you know, I, so, so. I, I love messing with the, the public private performance solitude sort of lines and I think I think it's possible to um, because of how frequently we ask kids to do it or they choose to do it however that works I, you know I'm seeing these dogs Kelsey <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're going to have a little uh, a dog introduction here. Dog. Kelsey, uh, tell me, tell us about your dog. Introduce it's bring us. your pet to Google Hangouts today. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sit. Yeah. Tell us this about your <laughs> This is Duke. He's kind of big to sit in my lap, so he's on the floor. Sit next to me. He didn't want to stay, so I have dog food. How? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had your dog? Kelsey. Three years, I think. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And it's interesting. Do you think dogs can see themselves in a hangout? <laughs> or see each other? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> Look. Oh, bark. Bark. See if he oh, that's right. And they bark. Yeah, they might hear each other. Goodness. Well, I, go ahead. <laughs> Monica, like jump back. In, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kevin Kelly's What Tech Wants. Um, mm -hmm. What I got out of that is what tech wants is for us to get to know ourselves better and to become more of a community. And, and I think it's allowing that. I think technology allows a transparency that we have the capability of lurking in. And mm -hmm. that ability to lurk um, gets us back to trusting, and which so many of us are so far away from. So that can be community-wise, but now in the detox sense, um, I think technology is allowing, like you said, so it's a video, you know, we use technology to do it, but if you didn't have that video, you wouldn't really be able to see yourself. So it, it is it is a back and forth, you know, public, private, public, private in order to fold back over on yourself and get to know yourself and in order to fold back over on your community and get to know people in your community that walls right now are keeping you from. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I and Shamar, you're still there, are you? Yeah. Yeah. So I have noticed so far and that girls are doing the process with more ease than guys are. Um, and I'm wondering, at least in my class and the way it's set up, and I think I think we could find some more private spaces to, to do the process so we can experiment with that. But I was just wondering if you noticed anything like that too or what you were thinking. 
Um, actually, I don't even think it's um the issue of privacy, um, which is affecting the guys. Um, I guess it's just um the guys aren't really as into it as much as the girls. Um, when you first proposed the idea of doing detoxes, you know, I was like, I was like looking at it like, okay, um, why? And, um, you know, the girls, they was like, you know, open, openly accepting it. Like you put, like you came to the girls and like, um, explain it to them. They're like, okay, yeah, let's go. And the guys, they just like, uh, you know, detox. Oh, okay. Hey, Shamar. Like, whatever. What do you? What do you think of this idea, Shamar? If you could text, okay, I'm just, so now is another version of detox, and you just text in, um, like I, connecting the ideas of, well, what are you into, Shamar? What's what's something you're into? Um, Good question. I'm into a lot of things. Music? Oh, uh, 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 yeah, I'm into music. Um, what kind of music? Anything, really. Okay. So let's it say really you you just connected some musicians that you've never connected before, or some kind of musical instruments. You you've got some idea that you're imagining you'd like to do. You noticed something, and you text that. Uh -huh. Well, then it goes into this big database that your town happens to have, and by the end of the day, you have five texts of people that you might not know um, that were thinking the same exact thing about music, and now you can say. Um, you want to meet up at such and such a place and, and, you know, pursue this. And what if that was school? What if that's how we did school? Um, just by connecting people by what they're interested in right then. What do you um, think? I don't know, because, like, there are some people that in my school that, um, you know, we share, this, we share kind of the same passion for music. Um, there's, like, some music programs that... Me and some of the guys we get into the school and like we all like to um just talk about and like hang out after school and just work on like some songs and stuff. But um like something like that, like bringing that kind of um that kind of topic up in school, like just going hey let's hang out and just um you know talk about music or whatever. Um like these um the people in our school nowadays like. People in school nowadays, they're like, or they're like always busy. Like they always have like things to do after school. Like they're ready to work, or they're ready to see um you know boyfriends or girlfriends, whatever. Um, so like you know like they got like they got like a a large social life outside of school, and like they're already building up um a work life for themselves, and like um that kind of like um kills that kind of like kills um the time and stuff. So like um, mm. us being able to like um find some time to hang out and um just talk about all these things that um we're interested in that we're interested in um it's kind of slim it's kind of yeah it's kind of slim but um like during class you know I guess we'll probably be able to work it out. Hey Shamar, so dream with me here. Imagine that you do get to have that time during the day, and imagine oh. that you find out because of this technology that there's some. 75 or 80 year old down the street that you have no idea even existed and he's some amazing musician that now you get to hang out with him. Uh, During the school day. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, actually that sounds pretty fun. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm like accepting to like, um, you know, Hanging out and just um talk about things that both of us enjoy, and um both of us can relate with um. I guess um it's just me just being natu like naturally like to um talk about what I'm into and um finding finding more people who's um into the same thing as I am. That's one of so, the things uh, we're trying to do. I like the way you worded that. We're we're trying to find people, other people's people. And then create spaces for them to get together. Uh, Thanks, yeah, Sean. I would think it would have to be something you're really passionate about because I couldn't <laughs> sit there and talk to someone for part of the school day of something I thought was mildly interesting. I don't think I could do that. It would have to be something you were really passionate about and could sit and talk for hours for. Yeah. 
I agree, because, like, I just lose interest if I'm um, talking about something that, you know, is just there, rather than um, talk about something that, you know, moves and inspires me. Um, like, like um, the topic of music. I love music. Um, I basically live and breathe music. Um, wake up in the morning, listen to music, go to school, listen to music. Um, come back home, listen to music, like, that's all I do, and that's all I think about. So, um, if there's people that's out there that's just like me, that is, um, just as passionate as I am in music, or whatever it is, um, that will, like, be able to, um, just open up this, like, new world of, like, um, just, um, um, national, like, communication with just, like, people all around, like, the world or all around our nation, and, um, just like be able to like expand our um expand our like knowledge and our reach on um all these things. So Shamar, you could do detox about music. Yeah. See, I, I like know. music, but I couldn't sit and talk about it forever and ever. <laughs> but I really like to cook. Like I had a two or three hour conversation with someone a couple days ago. And was fine with it. I could have sat and talked forever. But I don't think I could do that with other things. We've got an 11 year old in the lab, and um, I, I've talked about her before because the first week she was in the lab, she was like, um, I, I don't feel like I'm being very productive. <clears throat> the other day, she was sitting in a room and she goes, Ever since I've been here, the only thing that I don't have the ones that I'm trying to get things done um, is writing. And she said, and the funny thing is, I can't stop. I'm just, I do it nonstop, and I just love it, and I can't get it, you know. And um, I'm just overwhelmed with it. And I, that's what you guys are talking about. That's what we want people to find is the thing that they can't not do. We're calling that your art. Mm -hmm. um, finding out what you can't not do. You just you can't you try to ignore it. You can't. And that's what we think. You know, spend your days doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted I wanted to get back to detox just one moment. Those are um, it, just enough to say that um, today uh, a student who's uh, Misty who's done several videos so far in the last couple of weeks um, said that she wanted to do her detox written that uh, she didn't want to do it as a video. It was something that she could express if she could just sit down and free write it. So of course I said, go ahead and do it. Um, so, but I'm, I'm going to be interested to kind of follow, you know, we can also do it just audio. We can do it in lots of different ways. So I'm trying to, I, I think that'll be interesting to figure out when it's appropriate to do what kind of detox. Um, so, just wanted to mention that as well. I think that's up to a person. Yeah, we've got people that are doing it, writing, journaling, just like a journal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Evelyn, you have. Uh, we're we're kind of. We should uh, sign off here pretty soon. Did you have any thoughts about the girl guy question that I had? The girls and boys difference, and or anything else here at the end that you would like to talk about? uh not really i don't know all I, I would like to say was that at the beginning when you told me to do it i really didn't like it like i didn't like the idea of it i was like i was really um how do you say it? i was just really like not in it like i was just like no i don't want to do it but then as soon as it started happening um i kind of started liking it and i don't know i just feel like it's a really good idea and stuff why do you think that happened? I don't know, because I think it was because I was shy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Shamar, can you still hear us? We hear you saying hello. Hello? Looks like he's Shamar? gone. <laughs> we'll talk to him tomorrow. Listen, we should probably um, sign off here. Fred, yes. you have any kind of thoughts as well as we leave here? Oh, well, I, I wish I had been here from the beginning, and I look forward to uh, watching it when it goes up so I can get the context. Cool.
yeah. a bit. I'm, I, as I said, I, I have these strange personal relationships with just talking out loud. I don't do it very much. I, I'm sparse with my words generally. So it's quite a challenge to okay. think about. And something that you and I have talked about another time in a different context is you're a big digital storytelling guy. Um, and I love using the medium for the, you know, for that, the more formal stuff, but I also love yeah. using it for yeah. this kind of more casual, quick, you know, jump in and say whatever's on your mind stuff. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this actually reminds me in a way of, of the, the bulletin boards. There was a wonderful bulletin board called the Electric Cafe. This was pre-internet really in Santa Cruz that I remember meeting people and becoming very good friends with whom I had never met face to face. We were just online friends and it was a text chat friendship, mm -hmm. but it, it felt very close. So that there's, it's, you know, it's, it's, this is really, it's never been the computer. It's been the, it, the connectivity that interested me. Mm -hmm. about the, the, these uh, technologies. Cool. Fascinating stuff. Thank Great. you, guys. Thank you. Kelsey, any final thoughts for us tonight? I really enjoyed listening to this. I found out more than I knew before. And I'd like to see some of the detox videos. I think they'd be interesting to watch. Because for me personally, I think I'd have issues just kind of putting it all out there and knowing that pretty much anyone had access to it if they knew what they were doing. Right. Um, on, youth, on youthvoices.net, there's a channel now called Detox. And, um, you know, we're throwing everything up there. So, um, and, you know, you could check out Youth Voices yourself sometime if you'd like. And if you like what you're seeing there, you could join in. So think about it. <laughs> Thank you for coming by. And keep coming by, Kelsey. We love having your voice here. Thanks. And your dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, thank you for coming by. Uh, any any yeah. thoughts as we're signing off here? Yeah, Fred, your your last comment about the, the connection and not really the technology, you know, you talked about the the BBS systems before the internet and it reminds me of the I've been dabbling with the amateur radio ham radio thing uh, yeah. since, way since before the internet and <laughs> a lot of what you said is parallels with my experience with that and I'd like to explore that conversation some other time when we have a little more time but the it's about the connection and about the the content and not about the technology you used but we'll save that for a different day good night everyone thanks Scott Good night. Good night. So um, yeah. I do do want to mention here, uh, here at the end, just a sort of an outtake, that uh, we've been broadcasting over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. And we thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier and um, all the community that makes all that happen. Um, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, guys. Hey, bye. <laughs>